All right, uh, another Physics 115 tutorial question. We skipped question two. It's pretty simple, and we went on to question three, which is energy density in an electric field. Very similar to what was in the assignment for this week. The question is, imagine a parallel plate capacitor with plates of area A separated by a distance d charged so that the potential difference between the plates is v. Now as with every physics question we always draw a diagram first and apologies I cannot draw it in three dimensions at all but I'll do my very best to make it look absolutely terrible. So here is my parallel plate capacitor I'm going to say that the negative voltages are on this, sorry the negative charges are on this side this is the positive charge then we can put charges on the plates of the capacitor like this and equivalent opposite charges on the other side and then our electric field goes between them like this okay that distance there that is d our voltage across it is v and the area of the plates is area a that's part one already done we've been asked to sketch and label a diagram uh, showing the charge, the electric field, and the uniform um, electric field between them, ignoring fringe effects. So for part two, we've been asked to describe uh, the energy required to charge the capacitor. Okay. And it's, we've been asked to show that the energy density, which is the energy per unit volume between the plates, is given by this. The energy density is half E naught E squared. So there's quite a few parts in this, um, but we've been we've been asked to start off. Um, we've also been given that u, the amount of energy stored in the capacitor, is then equal to half times the capacitance times the voltage across the capacitor squared. So they're given at least at least some way to start. There's all sorts of ways to start problems like this. I would do it by starting with the definition of um, this. Uh, volume charge density here, uh, energy density, sorry, energy per unit volume. So this is our total energy uh, and we know to turn this into this we need to write energy per unit volume, UV, is the total energy divided by the volume of the system. Now what is the volume of our system? Well the volume is just going to be the area of our capacitor plates times the distance between them, that's the total volume here, so we can write this as A times D and this will become capital U over A times D. Right, now we want to start thinking about things like this. Um, we can also rewrite our capacitance as something different. So capacitance, if you have a look it up online or look in your textbook, you'll find that the capa capacitance of a capacitor is defined as the area of the capacitor plates divided by the distance between them times permittivity of free space. That is if there is nothing between them. This number can change if there is a dielectric in there, but the nice thing about this is that we can substitute this directly in here. So this is voltage. <laughs> this is volume. <laughs> um, slightly different things. And now we can substitute that in there. So I know I'm going quite fast, but I'll leave you to do the algebra alone. So we're going to go half A on D Naught, um, which is the capacitance times V squared like that and uh, the only thing we're missing now so we've got V squared which is our voltage divided by A times D and if you look carefully at that, what is going to happen is that that's going to cancel and that's going to cancel. And ah, yes, we're going to get left with d naught v squared on to d squared, which is not looking good because we're looking for this and we've got something with the permittivity of free space and the half but we are looking missing this e squared term and hopefully if you paid attention to my previous video you remembered that there is a way to um, change between an applied voltage in an electric field and it's just saying that the electrical field at any given point is the voltage across that point divided by the distance between them and so if we look at these terms here we can see that 
D squared must be V squared on D squared. We can replace that whole expression there and get half E naught E squared as we have been asked to do. And that is that problem done.